Daniel, are you out there somewhere? I there sure he am. is. Daniel, uh, welcome. Daniel is, is going to tell us, is, is one of our employees at Griffith Observatory. He's a museum guide that often can be found in the halls explaining the science and what goes on. And currently he's off in school, but he comes to our meetings and brought up an interesting story about another decadal survey. This isn't the astrophysics one where we talked about new space telescopes. This was a planetary science one. So Daniel, what was in this planetary science decadal? I'll definitely go ahead and tuck your ear off about it. I'm personally really <laughs> excited about this decadal survey. I'm studying planetary science. So on April 19th, when they released the decadal survey uh, for the years 2023 to 2032 to the public, I was very excited. For those of you who don't know what a decadal survey is, it's a, essentially a publication that outlines the highest scientific priorities and missions pertaining to, or specifically to this one, planetary science and astrobiology for the next decade. Think of it like a to-do list for planetary science and astrobiology research for space agencies. The National Academy of Sciences made a lot of recommendations for the next decade, but tonight we're just going to go over some of the top priorities listed in the survey. The highest priority listed in the Cato survey was to send an orbiter and probe mission to Uranus. Yes, you could this decade, you can make all the jokes you want. Um, it's really important that we're going to visit Uranus because we haven't visited Uranus via spacecraft at all since Voyager's flyby, Voyager 2's flyby in 1986. So it's extremely, extremely important, top of the list, top of the line, that we send a mission to study Uranus's interior, its atmosphere, its magnetosphere, and its ring system like never before, including a lot of the moons in that system that have never been imaged in great detail at all prior to this. So it's very exciting. I know there was a big buzz on the chat tonight regarding visiting Uranus. The next priority mission listed on the Decadal survey is to send a orbiter slash lander mission or cleverly called Orbilander mission to Saturn's moon Enceladus. I am extremely excited for this mission. Enceladus has always piqued my interest. Um, and what this mission would do would be to analyze fresh plume material, both from orbit and on a two-year landed mission. Um, mm -hmm. That mission would gather geochemical and geophysical data uh, for future experiments, while also directly searching for evidence of life. So I'm extremely excited until this is finally getting its due. The third highest priority listed in the Decadal Survey is a continuation of NASA's exploration program on Mars. According to the survey, the Mars sample return mission should be completed pretty much as soon as possible without a change to its current scope. So we don't want to do anything extra. We just want to make sure we can get all the samples that Perseverance is collecting and we send it back up over to Earth. The next priority would be, of course, in that exploration program would be the Mars Life Explorer, which would seek out current and historical records of life on Mars, it, should they exist, and assess its current habitability. Interestingly enough, for the first time ever, the Decadal Survey actually recommended planetary defense missions to be developed. The highest planetary defense mission listed on the Decadal Survey is NEO Surveyor, which would be a space-based infrared telescope tasked to survey near-Earth objects, otherwise known as NEOs or NEOs, so to speak. After that, the next priority listed for planetary defense would be a flyby recon probe designed to assess a specifically targeted NEO that remains to be determined and possibly even impact the NEO to assess different ways to redirect such NEOs. The last part of the decadal survey that we're going to cover tonight is regarding spacecraft categorization and more specifically the funding allocated for each category of spacecraft. NASA categorize as much of their current spacecraft within these four categories, flagship, new frontiers, discovery, and explorer. You can see where some of your favorite spacecraft fall along this funding tier system. As of right now, there are budget limits that define each of these categories. Science teams have to keep their financials in mind when proposing missions for funding, because this is essentially which program they're going to be applying for funding to. Well, good news, the Decadal Survey is actually recommending increases to the upper limits of both the New Frontiers and the Discovery Tiers of funding. 
imagine the science that could be accomplished with these budgetary increases. More money equals more science. Sorry, Explorer. Sorry that you're out of the loop there. <laughs> so it's, it's really exciting that we get these recommendations from the Decadal Survey. The 2023 to 2032 Decadal Survey is going to have a lot of weight for the space agencies, federal government, and research institutes. Um, in regards to how they approach science recommendations. For reference, as you can see here, the 2013 to 2022 Decato survey, known as Visions and Voyages, made recommendations that led to the development of missions like Perseverance, Ingenuity, and Europa Clipper. So as someone who's studying planetary science, it's such an exciting time to study planetary science. I'm super excited. And Twitter was ablaze with so many planetary scientists celebrating and reveling in their excitement for this decadal survey. With that said, as quickly as their social media pages blew up, they kind of faded back away to their science hidey holes, uh, just as Alex Parker here did on Twitter said, uh, until the next decade, so. The question I have is, do they make the same noises as the cicadas do? And, uh... I, 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 I hope, hope not. not. If I do, I will make sure to let you know. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll find out for sure. Anyway, Daniel, fascinating stuff. I can't wait to see some of these missions. Um, I really want to fast forward on the sample return mission from Perseverance as soon as it gets these samples. I want to know, was there once life on Mars or not? 